Getting your coffee? More coffee? Anyone? Oh, I, yeah, I need a warm up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <nice>, great too. <laughs> Cold. I should put my coat on. I should put my coat on. Oh. That's because you went and told them something I didn't say. You did too. I said that that they were wrong. That Rick Kent King was guilty of messing with us kids when we were little. That was it. That's all I said. I asked you if he was the one that killed her. No. And you said I yes. No, I did not. I said, how would I know? <clears throat> I know that he wasn't the one. But you said that they told you that. Oh, my yes, that's what they found out. No. Oh, God. Just wondering if, uh, if they haven't found her body. I wonder if uh, they thought of uh, taking that property in the back of the store. And, uh, they done search. There's a lot of places. Uh, I searched the property of. Uh, I also heard they searched the property of the old college, and uh, the body couldn't be found. I also heard that uh, someone uh, had told someone told me that. After this happened, <coughs> you or somebody told me that uh, she was uh, seen uh, uh, weaves of 
woods like weeds up there by um, Bobart and uh, Carry Man. Staring using my coffee cup. I wait until they fall off on their own. Hey. People gnashing on the table. Well, there's, do you see an ice tray? That's a smoke free environment. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot now. Okay, I'm just going to add it to the coffee I got. Oh, Lord. What the hell is that? That black coffee? Yeah. How about your lid? Can you use your lid? Oh, uh, you just run the coffee. Huh? Yeah, I got the wrong coffee or something. What? I, I don't need cream. Are you serious? You can't drink? <coughs> Will you drink it with cream? You just run that coffee. Sugar, right? Run that coffee. A little bit. Oh, give it here. Give that one to your mom. Take this. There you go. Be a soldier. That's what I'm talking about. Let me get some. Can you put your ashes in there? Here, use your lid. Oh. Yeah. It's gonna be a long, long. No, it ain't. Yeah. Do you need anything you want to discuss with us before we get started? Uh huh. Do you want to talk privately before we get started? Uh. Yeah, for two seconds? Yeah. Let me talk to him for two seconds. Yeah. They want to talk to us for two seconds before we get started. All right.
Hey, I, I got you this, okay? The sheriff's office got you this little uh, memento, okay? okay? You can open it before we start if you'd like. Let me start by saying that Detective Cole and I have looked into this extensively and thoroughly since June when we, when we started looking at Martha's disappearance. I think we've reached, remember when we met we told you that we were going to get to the truth. I think we're there, without a doubt. Okay? We are at the truth. We know 100% certainty what happened in Martha's disappearance and her death. Okay, I, we did not locate her. We um, spent an extensive period of time trying to locate her again. I think the area where she was left has changed. There was buildings there. There's no longer buildings there. Um, there was heavy equipment run through that area. The area was root raked. Martha being very small at the time. The likelihood that one of the construction workers or one of the people operating those heavy machines would have realized that they had found some human remains or bones or something to that point are probably non-existent. And I think that's why today when we go back to that area and we use we used canines, human remain detection canines, we had eight of them. We spent two days, we covered that entire 20, 20 acre parcel. Okay, we dug for two days. We never found anything that indicated she, she was there. Well, did you think to have <coughs> possibly that he could have uh, buried her up there behind that store? No. This is what I'm going to... I'm going to turn this over to David now because David wants to talk to you about some things. I, when I, I just want you to know that we, we investigated... It's been investigated through the years, but really extensive, thoroughly, these last several months. Okay? Where we looked... For Martha is where she was. Okay? But the problem is she's very tiny when she went missing. It's been twenty four years. In a week it'll be it will have been twenty four years since she's been since she went missing. There's been a lot of heavy equipment working in that area through the through the decades and I think You're talking about pits. No ma'am. The old Florida Memorial College across <clears> from the <throat> fire station that homes in West King Street. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? You know what a fire station is at Homes on West King? Uh, it's it was you remember no, where you I lived? I remember the old, old college. That's what it is. That's where it is. The old college. The old college property. That's where she was left and that area has changed significantly due to heavy heavy machinery being in there working. In the past decades. Not recently, but in the, in two thousand, but in the nineties and stuff like that. They knocked down the buildings. They took it all out of there. They root raked the area to make the area room for a chain link fence. And yes. I just think that there was that. Don't you think, though, that uh, clearing land like that, that they ain't going to be paying attention to whether there's bones or anything? That's just what he's saying. That's what I'm saying to you. Yeah, that's why. That's why we don't think that she's going to be recovered. Or we can we can find her. We don't believe that. We believe that she's probably gone in some of the the construction debris or the, the logs or the trees and stuff that they went and that or, and that or scattered to the point where we can't recognize it. Okay. But I want you to know that we did everything humanly possible to try to find her out there. Okay? We brought in canines, heavy equipment. Heavy equipment. We spent two days out there digging and we spent another two days out there just with dogs, making sure that we covered that entire twenty acre parcel in an attempt to locate her. I don't want you to think that we left any stone unturned when it came to trying to find her. Because ultimately, besides finding out the truth, our goal was to bring Martha home. Yeah. I just think that, that's un that's unfortunately, sad. it's just not going to happen. <laughs> They've done their job. Okay, and I, I want to turn it over to David, because David's got to tell you some things. And then Skip and I are going to be here to support David in telling you these things and answer any questions that you might have. Okay? <clears throat> Okay. Um, basically, um, the truth of the matter is, <clears throat> me and Martha went to the old college, um, 
and we got in a big argument and fight. And it was over money that uh, she wouldn't give back to me. It was some change of a uh, $20 bill. She hauled off, punched me. Um, I then, not thinking, I pushed her. She fell backwards. And her head, when she fell backwards, her head impaled on something sharp that was sticking out of the ground. I then said, are you all right? I run over to her. Um, and she just moaned a little bit, um, and then there was nothing else. I hollered out for help <clears throat> to, because Holmes Boulevard was right there. Nobody came. Um, nobody yelled back or anything. Um, I didn't want to leave her. <clears throat> freaked out. I then said I didn't know what to tell, tell y'all. I couldn't tell y'all. I just freaked. Uh, so I, not thinking, I buried. didn't think I to call an ambulance. Let him finish. It. Let him finish. Let me finish. I, <clears throat> I freaked. I tripped. I just didn't know I buried. I didn't know what to do. I, it was the wrong thing to do. I agree, but I was 14 years old. I wasn't thinking. Um, I then came home after that, but she was dead, definitely dead, before I buried her. That I know. Because um, I checked her stomach and all that. <clears throat> um, I then, after that, I sat there for about 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes. Just didn't know what to do. I went home, I got cleaned up. I regret, I'm sorry that it happened. I regret pushing her. I wish I could go back in time and and not, not have done that. I wish I could turn time. Because had I turned time, if I could turn time back, I, I would have just, you know, totally keep the money, you know. I, But it was all over money. And you know what money will do to you when you're a kid. I don't know if, when you were a kid, if you had a certain amount of money, that money was valuable to you then. You know. But it, that's the way it was with me when I was a kid. Every dime I got, I depended on it <clears throat> because I, most likely I had to work for it. I can't believe um, what I just heard, especially. But it was a freak accident um, when you were so close to her. <sighs> I wasn't that close. I mean, I was close, yeah, but. You know, even Margaret, hold on, David. Margaret, I think what's important is that even as close, I got siblings, brothers, and sisters, and we're close. But yeah, we fought. And probably the reason why we're still alive today is because we just didn't have a freak accident, as David's described to you. 
happened to us. But I fought with my brothers like so nobody's fight business. Worse. So we can fight worse. They're more passionate. Okay. Yeah. I think what the tragedy in this is is that Martha died as a result of a fight with David. That is is a tragedy, but it's a freak accident. The other part of this it's twofold because the other part of this is that he may not. You may feel that he didn't react properly when Martha got injured, but he reacted the only way. At that 14 years old, he was able to figure out to do. Okay? That's the way kids act. It's the way they act. They're impulsive. They don't think about things. They don't think things through. They don't have the... They get scared. They don't have the emotional, shall we say, stamina to deal with stuff like that. Or the capability to deal with stuff like that. The important part here is that 100% he never intended to kill his sister. It was a freak accident. And he's lived with it for the last 24 years. He's never told anybody that's living anyway. He may have told his ex-wife. We're not sure. He's not sure, but it's important to him that you don't disown him. Well, it's important to him that you understand what happened back then. And it's important to us that you believe what you're hearing. Because it's not going to be good for you. It's not going to be for good for him to think anything other than what he just told you because it's the truth. And nothing but the truth. <clears throat> well, you need a tissue, David? Uh, no. The healing process needs to start today. Do you believe him, Margaret? Uh, you know, I, I can believe him. Okay, but uh, maybe uh, even go so far as to forgive him. Okay, but I will never forgive it. No, and nor should you. He'll never forget it. I'll you shouldn't never forget it. You need and to forgive family, him because he was I've a child. The rest of the family. I've, I've carried this for twenty years. Will desert years. him. We can't control what anybody outside this room does, but you can control what you do, and he can control what he does, and he needs his mother to forgive him. And maybe if you do it, maybe other people will see the wisdom to do the same. I don't know. Uh, my, uh, huh. He was a child. When I told Raymond, he was destroyed. He, he uh, about the, uh, uh, well, I do have sometimes this, Understand. Right. I mean, I hear, but I translate yeah. sometimes wrong. Right. But uh, <laughs> when I told Raymond this, he just he has not. He's just like me. He hasn't been. He, uh, he's been upset. Sure. I mean, y'all been dealing oh. with this for um, two and a half decades. And uh, I think. Uh, he needs to be put to rest. I agree. At a proper funeral. <clears throat> well, there's nothing to say that you still can't do a memorial out of respect. You know, and there's nothing we wanted more than to be able to bring her remains to you. But despite our best efforts, we couldn't do it. And, you know, that doesn't mean that it'll never happen. Just maybe they'll develop that area, and, and they do find something, at which point, you know, we'll be on top of it. But there's nothing else we can do. You know, the truth is important. And that's, that's what you need, you know what I mean, to start the healing process. Because I know you spent a lot of time thinking of all the different things that could have happened to her. And I can tell you, it didn't involve a green truck. It didn't involve Rick Keeney. It didn't involve... All those people we talked about, it didn't. You need to let all that go because it's not helping you. No, it's not. It's not helping you at all. No, it doesn't that's benefit why, that's me to say told I, And I understand that, but and and that and those people aren't doing you any favors because the truth lies right here in this room. And as soon as we can understand that, then you can start healing from this. And I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight or if it's ever going to happen at all, but the truth at least gives well, you understanding. I think. Uh, that she still should uh, have a, a funeral service memorial? Sure. Yeah, I've heard of 
So that way we, we can talk about that. that could help. Church. Yeah, we can talk that about that. That would help me. Yeah. To be able to, you know, put her to rest. Some closure. Yeah. Well, you always hear that. Yes. Yes. But but our point here today was for you to hear what he had to say, but for you not to accept it as the truth, because you, we've told you you've heard a version of this before. And, and I know we've talked to you since, and you still were talking about these alternative theories. And we, we, because they were throwing I know, I know, but you need to let it go. And if somebody wants to keep telling you stuff like that, you can say, no, thank you. I already know the truth. Because they're not doing you any favors. That's what you got to tell them. And believe me, I'm not, I'm, I, we're not sitting here saying, believe David because of the words that came out of his mouth. It's not that simple. We've been doing this a long time. It's not what he said, but it's how he said it. And how the truth came to be. It was real. It's a real emotion. You can't deny it. And I can just tell that, I mean, that he after he said it, he you could see the relief because he's been carrying this. Just like you've been carrying it. That, uh, For a long that woman that used to live across from us. She's the one that told me. I I, I know who you're talking about. And uh, Brenda Gale. And uh, what her purpose of that was. It doesn't, you need to let all that go. We need to stop talking about all that. It just... You know what I mean? We need to stop talking about all that because none of that has anything to do with anything. If you have to think about it some way, think about it as maybe that when a 12-year-old girl goes missing, everybody wants to be involved. People want to help. help. People want to help. You know? Maybe that's her way of trying to help. And it, it certainly didn't help. But it doesn't matter. He was a scared kid. In a lot of ways, he's still a scared kid sitting there, in my opinion. He's terrified that you're not going to want anything to do with him. And uh, another thing, uh, I want to know It's okay to cry. I tell David when I talk to him for 20 something hours that you gotta have an emotional release. You gotta let it go. During the time that I was working for the time I was working for Wells Fargo, was I. Was I. Because I don't remember. I just don't understand why you didn't come to us and tell us. Tell her, why didn't you? Because I was afraid. Afraid of what? <coughs> tell her the truth. It's the truth, David. It's yeah. the way you felt. Mom can live with that. Nothing short of the truth. I was afraid that one, I would have been disowned by y'all. Two, I would have oh. gotten in trouble somehow over it. <clears throat> and you're afraid mom and dad were going to kill you? Yeah. Well, tell mom. Yeah, she's no. here. I love, I love the old three of you kids the same. And I would not have ever disowned you. Where do you get that idea? I don't know. Because he was a child. I was, I was 14 years old, mother. He <laughs> you only knew what goes through a 14 year old with mine or. <laughs> I feared the worst was going to happen. I didn't mean for any of, this, any of this to happen. I wish I could go back and turn the time and the table. It did not happen. 
But if you think back to that day, does what he tell you make sense at all? Remember, he wasn't there. You didn't come back till later, remember? No, he was home. No, you said it. I, I remember you said he didn't come he home. Was, I remember some. And what I remember is Martha being with me at the neighbors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I remember her saying to me, <clears throat> her last words was, Mom, I'm going over. I'll be back in five minutes. I said, that cow, but she said, I'll be back in five minutes. She was going to be back. It's not cow. Yep. Uh, but he didn't come back. I went to look for him, but he was at home. Where are you? Is he, he walked out of the trailer laughing. Yeah. Yes. Because I had laughed with her that day. Well, remember, Martha went to the store and came back. Is this what Mom may be talking about? Possibility. Because there was a time when Martha did yeah, go to the store in between, and yeah. David was home by himself. But when she came back from the store, they went off that's when him. David and her left and went off together. She, uh, she wouldn't go anywhere without him. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, she was afraid of the dark. It wasn't dark. It had gotten dark, right? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, a street light was put up by a trailer. <laughs> by where, where she slept in her. So that way she could... Uh, I used to hate that street light, too. She would be able to rest <laughs> and be able to play outside that night, you know. The street light would shine in the... Bedroom. No, it shined in her, in her bedroom. You know, me and David talked, and that memory that you just had right there about the street light and her being comforted by that light, those are the memories that Cole and I hope that you start remembering. And not David having to, and you having to relive her disappearance. Now that you know the truth, it's there. You can start remembering all the fun things that you used to do, and those little memories, right there. And how she could hear a song on, on the radio if she liked it. <coughs> it could be an hour later if she could sing that song word for word. Mm -hmm. Well, those are the things that we want you to remember now about Martha. The Olympics. She won two gold medals, which I've got. That's good. And a bunch of blue ribbons. That's outstanding. Which her blue ribbons, uh, I don't know what happened to those blue ribbons. Uh, they got lost, uh, I think. No, because those were in Dad's green trunk. Do you remember Dad's green trunk? That big trunk he always kept at the foot of his bed. Yeah, those were in that. In like a, a yellow envelope. <clears throat> you see, life has taken me so hard like this mm -hmm. because Martha and I was not only mother and daughter, but we were close as friends. And she could come to me and confide in me anytime she wanted. And, and she would not get in anybody's, voluntarily get in anybody's vehicle unless she asked me if it was okay. Not even her friends, not his car. But she, she didn't. She didn't. So she you didn't. taught her right. She didn't. She didn't. She, she was with her brother. She was with me. And it was just a, a tragedy. So you don't have to worry about any of that. She didn't do that. I mean, Stranger didn't get her. I don't want the rest of the family to be, uh, which they probably will. I'll throw it up. If you think or whatever. I'll throw it up in, in uh, my face and stuff. About what? About you being responsible for it and stuff. And that they will not want anything to be with you. You don't know that. You don't know that. As long as they know the truth. Yeah. Okay. And not 
something that's that's right. You can only trust in that. You know, made up and stuff that's added to it. Or yeah, exactly. Or nothing less, nothing more. Exactly right. And that's the way it should be. Nothing more, nothing less, but the truth. You know, and David and I talked about and forgiveness. If, and if after them here, after them knowing the truth, and they choose to disown me, they're wrong. That's on them. That's on them. They're wrong yeah. for that. And the, and sooner or later, they'll regret it. No. Right. They'll yeah. they'll get to thinking. No. Yeah. They'll but Rick, see where they're wrong. Rikini's a d different issue, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about Rikini. He's a different issue, totally. But I want to make sure, before we move on to Mr. Keeney, that you believe your son? I believe him. Okay. Um, I, it's going to be a while, probably, before I can actually get so your head around it. process it. Uh, what we need to actually, do. Uh, but we want you to have the ability, when you walk out the store today, when you're at that little champ, and somebody says to you, aren't you Margaret Lamb or Martha's mom? You know, I think some guy over here did something to where you know to dismiss that as just rhetoric and not and an untruth. Because today, you have the truth. Yeah. And I told, what, I told David in my interview with him that he and I were going to sit in this room until in my head and in my heart, I was 100% convinced that he yeah. had been honest with me. And he sat here until he did that. And it's not like Detective Cole said. It's not what he said. It's the emotion that accompanied what he said. And the conviction in the way he said it. Okay? And believe me, we've been doing this a long time. And uh, people don't really get over on us. We don't, we don't accept things, you know, just at a face value. I mean, we've got to know it in our heart. And we're pretty good at what we do. And that's why we're comfortable to sit here and tell you these things. <laughs> And the most important thing that we got to do now is we got to heal, and yes, we got, and part of the healing process is to have a moral church for her. Okay. Um, I don't know how to go about setting something like that up. We'll talk about it. Um, I don't know what we can do. If we can, we will. I thought you all said that we could have a fine for that. Yeah, I don't even know if there's a legal way to do that. We'll talk about it. We'll That's what we're here. We we we'll help. We'll deal with that. We'll help you deal with that stuff. Yes. You need to talk. You need to let the family know that there's going to be one forthcoming, and maybe you can find some folks that knew her well and want to talk about her, and you know. Yeah. Do you belong to any churches? Raymond does, though, right? Yeah. Well, now he does. Yeah. Well, maybe Raymond can approach his church. You know. It's not it's something that necessarily needs to cost a lot of money. No. So you know no. what I mean. So something can be done. Raymond said that at the funeral he, that he was going to provide one hundred and fifty dollars for the roses for her funeral. I think you guys need to sit down as a family, even if it's just the three y'all, mm -hmm. and decide what and where and when you want to do it. And then you call us, and we'll see if there's anything we can do to help. Yeah. You need to do it. This right here. Is that her? They've already got one like that. Where is it, by the way? Where? My wife. Where? Oh, specifically. Right now, it's, <laughs> it's on the floor next to my bed because right now I'm waiting to get a dresser. Face up or face down? No, it's... Okay, no, just check it. standing up. <laughs> That's good. We're good. Yeah. You just check it? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what are you thinking about, Margaret? All right. I'm hoping I don't end up having a nervous breakdown at all. You're not. You're a strong woman. I even wanted to go after him. <laughs> I didn't know. Leave it up to the wall. 
Raven wanted to go after who? Person responsible? At the time, I told him Rick Keeney, and he said, I'll kill him, I'll go after him, I'll get him. I said, no. Yeah, let's call him off of that, and we'll take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> I said, no, let's call him off of that. I said, maybe that's it, I'll kill him off. Are you going to be able to sit down with Raymond and have the same conversation? It's not going to be easy, but yeah, I think I can. Okay. And I, I, like I said, I've got to see him today anyway. And um, I think uh, when I see him, I'll have that conversation okay. with him. Needs to happen. He's going to take his anger. He'll take his anger out on you. He will probably beat the letter. Well, you know what you can do, too? You can write it in a letter. Yep. Can write it in a letter and get it to him? Sure. Well, it's better than yeah. you two rolling around in the front yard and us coming over there to the sheriff's office or the city police department responding for two guys fighting in the front yard. True. Family matter, right? Yeah. Remember, we told you how family matters changed since yeah. 1979. We go to jail, and that's not what we're trying to accomplish here. Yeah. So you do it the way you think you need to do it. But I think you got the strength to do it. I'm impressed with how you handled it this morning. Absolutely. I think I'll do it in a letter and I'll give it to him. With the picture. With the picture. There you go. You let me handle this with him. You don't say anything, let me do it. Let me uh, tell him. You need to do it today. Yeah, it's going to be done. Because this, you know, yeah, he needs to done. hear it firsthand. And then maybe the three you can sit down after he gets through his anger and calm down and talk right. about it. Talk yeah. about the memorial. Yeah, he, my kids were molested by that Kini. We're going to take care of it. We're, We're going to take care of Mr. It. King. Yeah. Yes, he did it to all three of us. We're going to need to talk to Raymond about that, too. They're getting it, guys. Or, guys. Now, I don't know. Because I haven't been able to really talk to him about that, but I don't know if he could even... I'm sure he would remember it, but... Listen, you don't worry about that. Just worry about what you remember and what you know. Yeah. And we'll deal with Raymond. And if it's, he did it to y'all, he did it to others, and we'll figure it out. Yeah, <clears throat> because I'm sure he had, there's other kids that live <laughs> around him. He had kids too, right? I think he did. Yeah. But I think, because he, his wife at the time, him and his wife were separated. They didn't live together, but I think she had the kids. I gotcha. See, I, I never told that. You kids would never have been up there. Never. Well, we're, David, at some point we're going to sit back down. Yeah, we have to talk about that We have separately. to go through that separately of this issue, okay? <coughs> I need you to sit down with me and let's go over what happened. Same kind of detail, you know what I mean? But that's a different issue. I didn't know, I, the reason why we didn't get into that two days ago was because I didn't want, I want to focus on Martha's. I don't want to focus on the sexual abuse. We're going to focus on that now, okay? Not today, but the next time you and I sit down. Is that fair enough? You understand what I'm saying? Sexual abuse. Yeah, I need you to start thinking about what occurred, what earliest you remember it occurring. Just the okay. details. The details of that. Remember, I told you, what's law enforcement? Business of details, right? All right, yeah. Okay. So we got we to gotta get into those details, but we're not going to get into that today. Today, we need you to start work with Mom and Raymond and working on the healing process. We're going to give you some time to deal with this right. with Martha situation. And then you and I will sit down, and then Raymond and I will sit down. And we'll try to figure out where we're going to go from there. Okay? okay. Does that sound good to you, Margaret? Because yeah. make no mistake about it, Detective Cole and I want to get Mr. Keeney just as bad as you do. If he's guilty, he needs to be held accountable for it. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I don't want to see. I, I want to see him end up uh, being uh, getting sentenced to death. Because well, believe me, if we uh. If we sentenced everyone to death for molesting little kids, there'd be a lot of executions. Yeah. Well, maybe that would have put an end to it. Sure, it would have. I'll tell you what would put an end to a lot of killings. It's that uh, if they were sentenced to death, that they would show it on television. Mm -hmm. What was going to happen? What happens? Sure. Dave, what's up? Just thinking. Okay. <laughs> you gonna open up your thing? Yeah. You gonna open it up? Yeah. 
was the last time you opened up a gift? <laughs> I can't even remember. <laughs> Big enough? Yeah. You mean I'll throw that away? Real big. <laughs> Mom gets the big one. Sorry. <laughs> Don't be jealous. Yeah. Um, uh, uh. I don't know if you still have the picture or not. Uh, but that's how you need to remember. I got a lot of uh, pictures of them. Picture album. Yeah, in fact, I gave my aunt the wallet size one that I had. Okay. Cold cream house no, no, no. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. That was my top shoes one. Yeah, can't want to wear can't want. Uh, that's it. Okay. Fine. See what? So the neighbors about how I was going to get her a, a Walkman. Uh, I guess it was one of those radios with a hit. I yeah. remember when they came out. Same Walkman. Yeah. I, had, I did get her one. Mm -hmm. But she never got the opportunity to do it. So. Then she told the neighbors that they were going over to uh, the grandma's for Thanksgiving. Uh, and everybody kept saying that she wasn't smart, but yes she was. Because um, quite a few th different things. Well, there's different kinds of smart. Well, her IQ was 200, so that I'd be though. Photographic memory. She could memorize it. And she was real good at math. She could figure things out right in her head. Math figures. Never could figure out how the heck she could manage to do that, but she did. And she was just coming, uh, coming out of uh, this tomboyish. Mm -hmm. uh, or the LC. <laughs> Have we answered everything for you? Yeah. Outside of, uh, if y'all are going to set up a yeah, you, Raymond, and David sit down. You figure out what you'd like to do. Then you start my card, David. Yeah, I believe I do. Um, well, you can call and get a hold of us. I know she's got calls number. Mm -hmm. Okay, whatever. Because I gave her a piece uh, of card the other day. So you guys sit, sit down, figure out what you want to do, and then we'll try to make it, help you make it happen. <laughs> Fair enough. I believe that uh, her funeral could be could be held at a uh, uh, you know, um, uh, well, it would be more of a memorial. 
Funeral homes usually have to have a body, if I'm not mistaken. But I think you should talk to Raymond about his church. Right? And maybe he can, I'm sure if he belongs to a church, that church would be more than glad to host some kind of memorial service for Martha. His, where people he, can come he, and talk about her. And He told me, he said, uh, he told his preacher about Martha. And uh, they went into I prayed for four days for her to be uh, come up. I'm sure. Um, and they said four days later, this chair comes up. <coughs> Dave, you alright? Yeah. Alrighty. You take candy with you? I know you got babies over there at Cheryl's house. You can give them the babies. Huh? Yeah, I guess. There you go. Gifts from Aunt Margaret. Yeah, I have, uh... You make sure Raymond gets that, right? Yeah. Okay, buddy. <coughs> Taking that or are you done with that? I'm done with that. You don't like her coffee? <laughs> well, no, that was for I done drank the coffee. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll go ahead. I'm going to just put this back together. You go ahead outside to the left. You can smoke all you want, and we'll be right there to run you back to the house, okay? Okay. All right. <laughs>